plenty of goals because Ukraine and Brazil both played wonderfully well against them. They're not full-time athletes, the uh, Irish team. They've got some talented players like Gary Messick there, who's got great experience also. And they've made a couple of changes to their starting seven after that 7-1 defeat to Brazil. They've changed the goalkeeper. The more experienced Brian McGillivray is back in goal. And Tomiwa Badun gets a, a first start at the Paralympic Games. He'll play in a forward role. Ryan Nolan started there in the previous game. Both Great Britain's games were so close. They were terrifically entertaining contests, hard-fought matches against two of the best sides in the competition, maybe even the two best sides in the competition. The British camp feels that it uh, was hard done by merely by being drawn in the same group as both. Anyway, that's a different story. And uh, Jack Rutter, the captain of Great Britain, is back in the team today. James Blackwell is selected as well in preference to Emil Rudder by coach Keith Webb. Proud of his team's performances, but ultimately disappointed, I suppose, by the results, as they all were. Well, which of these two rival teams will end the group stage on a high? Will Great Britain or Ireland achieve their first victory in the competition? The British team in the red and Matt Crossan with the ball in immediately to find Jack Rutter, the captain. And Rutter has scored. 21 seconds. Well, what a start by Great Britain. The smiles are back on the faces. They've come out with a point to prove and the captain has struck right at the start of the game. Are they going to take their frustrations out on the Irish? It whizzed through the legs of Carl McKee and that made it difficult for McGillivary. Crossan, tricky customer, and got away well from his man. Well, you do feel for Ireland, who spent uh, two entire games on the back foot against Ukraine, against Brazil, and may have felt that today there might have been a little bit of respite. 21 seconds later, and they're a goal down. Teams that don't achieve their goals, though, at Rio 2016 in the seven-a-side football. The frustration compounded by the fact the sport's not on the programme for Tokyo in four years' time. Rutter. Nice ball in. The layoff was to Blackwell. Rutter and Crossan. Well blocked by the Irish captain, Luke Evans. But straight to Liam Irons. And Ireland have barely been out of their own half. Rutter, Barker, who got an equalising goal against uh, Ukraine 
really spurred British hopes that they might be able to qualify. Badoon, now he's got pace, and he's up against Liam Irons here. He's going to try and run him. Good support from Blackwell. And then Burt's cross was blocked by cross and corner. We saw Badoon briefly in the previous game. Not quite sure he's mastered the art of playing the right pass at the right time, but he's unquestionably got ability. Mess it with the ball in, it was a good ball too, and uh, in came Luke Evans. Well, that'll make the Irish feel a lot better. Blackwell for Great Britain, who's captain Jack Rutter got them off to the perfect start. Fifth place is the best that either side can do. Crossan. On by Barker. Here's Rutter. Captain against captain. And Evans felled him. Irons with the effort, so a Britain corner. Well, he's certainly not on the post now. Here's Crossan. Well, he is well capable of scoring spectacular goals, Matt Crossan. He'll reflect on a, a big chance missed at the end of the opening match against Brazil with the outside of his right boot, which might have made it, would have made it 2-2 right at the end. Messi's a little bit unlucky not to get a, a free kick for Blackwell's challenge. But this is Rutter, he's got some space. Here's David Porcher. Now Irons. Forward to Porcher. Into Rutter. A oh, lovely turn by Rutter. And that might be a penalty. The foul by Badoon. It was coming in from the wrong side. Simple one for the referee. Lovely turn from Rutter, and from that moment, the Irish defence was in big trouble. And Badoon's tackle was rather desperate. The referee wasn't ready for the kick to be taken. Neither were we, frankly. Jack Rutter then for Great Britain to make it two. Oh, super save by McGillivray, but he can't keep out the rebound from Barker. He's really frustrated his defenders didn't react more quickly. But Great Britain look in the mood here for goals, and they've got two inside the first eight minutes. Super save from the Irish keeper. 
and you can understand his frustration. Parker with his second goal of the competition. He's turning into Britain's ace poacher with a goal from close range against uh, Ukraine as well. He wants one from further out, my goodness. That was a super save from Brian McGillivray. Parker hit that really well. Liam Irons feels like an Irish rear guard already here. Porcher. Crossan. Back out to Rutter. Three to aim at here in the centre. Barker's coming towards the ball. And it was well read by Joseph Markey, who has defended throughout the competition manfully. He's been busy, that's for, sh for sure. Here's Badoon. Marky. Now Messit. Crossan got back to Luke Evans. Another look at Badoon's challenge on Jack Rutter. Barker reacted very swiftly to plant in the rebound. <laughs> Any more chances for Barker here. Elected to pass to Porcher. Very unselfishly. The hole in the net was there beforehand. Before Barker managed to squeeze the ball through that particular gap. Crossan. Oh, keeper did well again to get it away from the three and a half meter goalkeeper's area. Crossan. Back from Rutter. Might be a pride thing for Great Britain with uh, Ukraine having put six past Ireland and Brazil seven to compete with the scores achieved by those two teams. The two teams who Britain ran very close indeed. Looks like he's got the players' attitude Completely spot on today, Keith Webb. He'll be thrilled with the way they've started this. Evans up to Badoon. One-on-one -on -one here, which he'll relish. Turning irons. And a stinging shot. He's only 19, Tomiwa Badun. Tremendously athletic player. Mess it with the corner. Porcher. And he's got plenty up in support if he gets his head up to see them. Jack Rutter. Barker waiting. 
Terrific intervention by Markey. He was stretching, but he got it exactly right now. Badoon against Liam Irons once again. Well, he's going to get opportunities on the counter-attack, Badoon, which is what he's in the team to exploit. I'm quite sure of that. Yeah, that was critical, wasn't it? Well into Rutter. That was a super pass from Messick to Badoon. And he's hit it well. Oh. Giles Moore made a brilliant save to turn that onto the crossbar. Badoon can't quite believe he kept it out. I mean, he hit it far too quickly for us to keep up with there uh, Giles Moore got a fingertip to that traveled too quickly for the refereeing team to see but um, Alan should have had a corner still another warning from Badoon as to what he's capable of David Porcher, one of three Scottish players in the Great Britain squad. Jonathan Patterson and Martin Hickman are on the bench for the time being. David Levy from Northern Ireland is also part of the 14. There are 10 from England. They finished fifth in the World Championship last year. So that's why Britain were hopeful of a fifth place finish or better here, bearing in mind Russia were excluded from the competition. As we take a one minute refreshment break here, the players weren't necessarily ready for it, but um, we had it in the previous game. The temperatures have been so high today that the officials decided it was uh, safe and sensible to take a one minute hydration break midway through the first half and midway through the second. So what we've got, I suppose, is a match that's divided into four quarters of 15 minutes. Here was Badoon's effort. And I think you only get that kind of reaction when you know the goalkeeper's got a touch. Little reminders to Great Britain, though, that uh, it's all very well pouring forward, but they have to take care of uh, the back line as well. It's a young British squad too, they're improving. It's a young Irish squad, actually also. It's Michael Barker, one of the experienced campaigners at 29 years of age. This is his third Paralympic Games. He's a young player with uh, Wayne Rooney at uh, Everton with Michael Barker. USA coach Stuart Sharp. Side finish, bottom of pool A, uh, bottom of pool B rather. In very unfortunate circumstances, they weren't far away from a semi-final place. Irons to Crossan. Assistant referee saw differently to the referee and helped him change his mind. Players in this uh, football seven aside at the Paralympic Games all have coordination impairments of one sort or another. That's why they're allowed to roll the ball in one-handed. They can throw the ball in 
conventional 11 a side style too if they want. And if their impairments allow. Irons out to Matt Crossan. All the way back to the Bristolian, James Blackwell. Rutter into Porcher. Oh, a super ball by Porcher. And a terrific challenge by Badoon this time. Crossan was the target. Badoon's given away one penalty with a, a rash tackle in the penalty box, but that was a really good intervention. Joseph Markey calling for Gaz, Gary Messick, to get his head on the ball. The two most experienced members of the Irish squad, both aged 29. Messick played in the uh, Athens games of 2004. Playing in the Paralympics for the third time. That's him. Cormac Burt is, is uh, getting right in the way of the British goalkeeper. And Blackwell couldn't clear, and Badoon was there. And Giles Moore did just enough. And you can see how desperate Tamiwa Badoon is for his first, first goal in the Paralympics. Degree of chaos in the British box here. Evans got a toe to it, and then Badoon put it wide. There are no offsides in this form of the game, so attackers can stand as close as they like to the goalkeeper without impeding him, I suppose, naturally enough. But uh, it does mean you can land a ball in the goalkeeper's area and it can be difficult for the keepers to clear. Here's Barker. Ten minutes to half time. Mess it this time on the counter for Ireland, but Britain have three defenders back. Well, the Brazilian crowd will always encourage the extra skillful approach. Evans from very long range. David Porcher, the British number nine, was only actually introduced to this form of the game earlier on this year. Plays in midfield in the 11 a side game, but often uh, up front for Great Britain. Scored against Brazil in their first match. Here's Badoon. Well, he's a young man, full of ability and full of ambition. Gary Messick has a box of tricks himself. Barker away from Markey. Wide to Crossan. Irons. Rutter. Porcher waiting for it on the right hand side. Irons. Blackwell's effort. If you get it low enough and on target, and it puts the goalkeeper under pressure because those attackers can get so close in, 
They can pick up rebounds or deflect the shot as it's a goal bound and make it difficult. But you've got to hit the target first, really. He's exciting and occasionally frustrating, and that's all part of the, uh, the mixture for the Irish number 11. Gary Messick was in a little bit late there. And the effects microphone very ably picked up the sound of uh, boot on boot. Last six minutes of the first half. Rutter and Barker with Britain's goals early on. Irons with the ball in. Badoon, who made that clearance, has hit the crossbar for Ireland. Irons took a bit of a chance there with a, with a high boot, but referee ruled it wasn't dangerous. And here's Crossan for Great Britain. Hasn't got much to aim at in the centre, but he realised that. He's played it back beautifully to Rutter. Now Porcher. First touch wasn't quite what he was hoping for, and that allowed Burt to make the tackle. Just bounced off the boot of Porcher. Thomas. Thomas in here. Thomas. If there was an appeal for handball, no chance of it being given at that pace. Irons into Barker, neatly worked out to Crossan. Crossan was getting a call to play it into the feet of Barker in the penalty area. This side have posed a threat on the counter-attack. Gerard Glynn's Island. Oh, Blackhall didn't like that. The advantage is played. Our two British players getting frustrated by a couple of thumping tackles that have come in. And the ball wasn't necessarily uh, there to be won. Blackwell. Apology came quickly from Irons after he'd missed the target. The intensity has just dipped a little bit in the last few minutes here. And again, the heat has got plenty to do with that. It's been really hot, well up into the 30s this afternoon at the Diodoro Stadium. Irons away from Messit to pass on out to his left-hand side, but Irons used that angle to come back infield. Here's Crossan. Couldn't pick out Irons. Strength in numbers from the Irish defence, but not much further forward. Messit, though, has picked out Evans. Now the ball forward towards Badoon. Nearly got it 
through the legs of Irons and he's a little bit unlucky to be penalised. Well, he's testing the patience of the referee with his reaction, but I think he was unfortunate in the first place. Crossan. Super 1-2. Barker towards the ball. Couldn't find the finish. Last minute of the first half then. And Great Britain will be broadly satisfied with their efforts. The two goals coming inside the first 10 minutes. They haven't been able to build on, on that. And Ireland have threatened on the counter-attack once or twice. Badoon hitting the crossbar. Courtesy of a, a tip of the goalkeeper's fingers. Giles Moore made an excellent save. It's been hot work and the tempo has dipped in these last 10 minutes of the first half. Here's Porcher and Badoon again with a reaching tackle. Gave away a penalty in the eighth minute. Russell took it, it was saved, but Barker scored with the rebound. That was the second goal. Britain's first goal came on 21 seconds. Or can Great Britain end the first half with a flourish? David Porcher. Oh, 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 well, Ireland are really unlucky that it's gone in off Luke Evans, I think. But what a strike that was from David Porcher. He's going to try and claim it, the Scottish striker, but um, that will go down as an own goal, albeit a remarkably unfortunate one. What a hit. Barker was in there too, actually. Don't think it got a touch. What an extraordinary strike. Don't think we've seen a ball hit quite as hard as that. Not off the floor anyway in this competition. Irons up to Porcher. Rutter, another lovely turn. Here's Barker. Here's Porcher again. Oh, that's a lovely pass. It's four. Blackwell arrived at the far post and two goals for Great Britain in added on time at the end of the first half. They've doubled their tally. If the third was a little fortunate with the rebound, that was beautifully worked. Blackwell just left his marker and finished well. 4-0. And it was the last kick of the first half. Great Britain dominant. It's Ireland nil, Great Britain four at half time. That third goal for Great Britain has gone down as a Luke Evans own goal, for the time being at least. 
75% possession to Great Britain. Ireland, when the first two goals went in, would certainly have feared a half-time scoreline similar to this. But in that middle period of the half, they did pose a threat on the counter-attack and actually started to just make Great Britain feel a little more cautious about attacking in such number. And the slightly confusing placement of Evans on the uh, Irish side. The third goal for Great Britain after Porcher hit that quite remarkable free kick. We might get a chance to see that again shortly. But quite frankly, wherever you're watching football of any kind, to see a ball struck as fiercely as that was by Porcher, that's quite a sight. I don't think anybody who's watched any of the seven-a-side football, though, will be in any doubt as to the elite nature of this competition. There are teams of different styles. Brazil has that flair that so many Brazilian teams have, and individuals with great capability to perform twists and turns and individual tricks. Ukraine as a passing unit. They're a wonderful team to watch. Iran also showed some outstanding technical ability. And the British side today are trying to prove that they deserve to be in that category as well, even though they know they've missed out on a semi-final place. Here we go then with some of the best moments from the first half and Jack Rutter got on the score sheet inside the first 30 seconds. Fizzing in the shot. The turn created the space initially, and then it whizzed through the defender, and that meant Brian McGillivary in the Irish goal was not in a position to react. Badoon's foul on Rutter, penalty. Captain stepped up, and it was Barker who put the rebound in. Irish goalkeeper was rather frustrated. Nobody followed it up. Now, here's the counter-attack. And it's impossible to really see it, but Moore made the, a little save there. That was the free kick Porcher hit. My goodness, extraordinary power. Felt sorry for the goalkeeper there. And then Blackwell arriving. He was delighted to get his, his goal. Britain's fourth and the very last kick of the first half. A head-scratcher for Joseph Markey and the Ireland team, who've been valiant in defence for most of the competition. But it seems outclassed today, as they were in the two previous games. At half-time, Ireland fearing another thrashing. It is Ireland nil, Great Britain four.
So a tough start to the first half for Ireland and a tough end for it also with two more British goals coming in added time at the end of the first period. Rutter and Barker having scored for the British inside the opening eight minutes. So it seems pretty clear cut that Great Britain are going to head to the fifth and sixth place playoff and Ireland to the seventh and eighth place match. Sean Heidel is on for Jack Rutter. Martin Hickman coming on too. So start of the second half. And how many more goals will Great Britain score against an Ireland team that uh, has struggled right throughout this competition? An Irish team which, through this man, has posed a threat on the counter-attack today. But Britain scored two quick goals right at the end of the first half to double their tally from two to four. And the man who got the fourth goal right at the end of the first half, James Blackwell, with the last touch of the first half, has been replaced by Martin Hickman at half-time. Sean Hydale has come on for Jack Rutter. Heidel with the first touch there on the head. The former Liverpool youth player won the FA Youth Cup with the Reds back in 2007. It's the goals from Rutter, from Barker, and Evans' own goal after a thumping Porcher free kick, and from Blackwell. And it does seem though Great Britain are going to finish third in this group. They're going to end with a positive goal difference. Two very narrow defeats to uh, Ukraine and Brazil. And both of those sides had six goal wins over Ireland. And Britain heading for a, a similar result perhaps. Super layoff by Porcher. Here's uh, Highdale. Just overdoing the pass to Crossan. Barry Ferguson, the team manager on the, the left there, and Gerard Glynn, the coach next to him. They knew it was going to be hard before they came out, Ireland. Ferguson said that they were expecting three of the hardest games they'll ever have against three of the best teams in the world. I think he's been proved correct on both fronts. The trouble for Great Britain is that they were one of the three best teams in the world, but only two of those teams could reach the semi-finals, and they're the odd ones out. Here's Badoon. to compete a bit more strongly for the ball if you want to get a free kick, I think. Played it through the legs and, and stopped playing. His Porcher wants to get it on that left foot of his. Martin Hickman having to, to recover.
Good tackle by Irons. He seems to relish defending Liam Irons. He's had a lot of difficult one-on-one -on -one jobs over the course of uh, this game and the two previous. And he's emerged with credit throughout. Porcher. Here's Heidel. Irons being encouraged to come forward. Porcher again. Well, having hit, seen him hit that free kick just before half time, you wouldn't discourage him from shooting from that kind of range. Barker. Here's Highdale. Both he and Jack Rutter are in the class eight, so though they're two key figures for Great Britain, only one of them can ever be on the field at any given time. Highdale looking for the return pass, and he's got it. Crossen's coming in from the far side. Irons for Crossen. Crossen spanning behind, looking for the return. Irons. Well, you can see the three Great Britain players there crowding in on goal, hoping that that strike might come back off the goalkeeper. No offside in Paralympic seven-a-side football, and it's quite a big pitch, really. 70 metres by 50 metres or thereabouts. I think mean, defenders can't condense the area in which you play. Hickman. Half a chance that. He couldn't resist. I think one or two will have their eyes on getting on the score sheet with four goals having already been scored. Tamiwa Badoon was desperate to get a goal today. And he's got a firm handshake from the coach. I think he played an excellent uh, 36 minutes. Dylan Sheridan has impressed. Another 19-year-old for Ireland. They've got some good young players coming through. The future does look quite bright for this Irish setup. The sadness again for them is that it'll be eight years before they can play at the Paralympics again, assuming Football 7 Aside gets back in for 2024. And that's what Sheridan can do. It's super play. He's unlucky. Not clear. Messit has Burt to his left. It's a good strike. Nobody followed it in. Well, they've certainly had their moments. And a goal now in the Paralympic Games would be a super memory to take away. Sheridan got one in the 7-1 defeat to Brazil. Both times he's come on, actually, Sheridan. He's, he's made a difference. It's a lovely pass to Crossan. Super take as well. Oh, it's very nearly a beautiful goal by Great Britain. Porcher on his slightly weaker right side. Couldn't quite convert it. Well done, Brian McGillivray. Porcher with the corner. Here's Highdale. Lovely pass to Crossan. Hickman. Well, Ireland have sp had spells in all of their games when they've been pushed right back into their own penalty area and have been hanging on for for dear life. Hickman to cross it. Yeah, 
Highdale up to Porchett. Barker. Porchett trying to draw in Carl McKee. But McKee's another one. He's only 18, Carl McKee. Terrific learning experience for him. Barker to Crossan. Crossan still hasn't got his goal at these games. Although he's come close, very close, on a number of occasions. He'll still be thinking back to the very first match when he struck a fierce shot off the inside of the post against Brazil. And it fizzed back across goal and away to safety. One of the many ifs, buts and maybes that the British team will leave Rio with, I think. 20 minutes left. No goals yet in the second half. Ireland got on the counter-attack here. Evans just slipped. Inopportune moment. And this is Porcher. Might come for Highdale. That's Connor Chute. Another teenage player for Ireland. Well, if they all stick together and they all keep playing and they all keep improving, in 2024, a lot of these players will be hitting peak age in their mid to late 20s. Highdale's ball in. He's crossing for the return. Gary Messick with a super pass up to Dylan Sheridan. Oh, and then Evans. Well, why not? Decent effort to hit the target at all from that kind of range. It's only five metres by two. Irons. Here's Highdale. There's that effort from Luke Evans. Just got a bit more swerve on it, then you never know. Charles Moore was quite relieved that it came straight at him. Slightly mystifying free kick for Ireland. <laughs> Barker's expression was a picture. Players will be grateful for the shade as the sun goes down behind the main stand. Oh, Markey's ball in. Misjudgment by Giles Moore. He's a little fortunate to get away with it. Ireland have struck the crossbar for the second time. Still Highdale. Oh, that's a lovely pass into Porcher. Porcher's frustrated, he hasn't scored today. Oh 
This is now the 11th match being played on this pitch as well in the space of, what, five days. Luke Evans into Sheridan. All good defending by Irons. Mess it to Markey. And the counter-attack might be on here for Crossan. Porcher trying to run Carl McKee. Ireland recovering well. Here's Liam Irons. And Liam Irons just caught Markey, and Markey did not like it at all. Hector Robas Bondia from Spain is the referee. He left a foot right on the top of uh, Joseph Markey. That was a painful one. And Liam Irons won't want to get a caution today he's had one in this competition already. If he wants to pick up a suspension, and that would be him out of the uh, fifth and sixth place playoff. Refreshment break has been called for by the officials. Our temperature has come down from 37 to 30 degrees over the course of the afternoon, but even in the shade now, it's still very warm. Need those cooling towels. Try and stop the players from overheating. Should be glorious conditions for the evening match featuring Ukraine and Brazil. That uh, will determine which of those two teams tops this pool, Pool A. I think we'll have a super crowd in for that as well. Porcher looking for and finding Martin Hickman. Well, seemed a rather unnecessary collision between the pair. The ball was running dead anyway. Things just getting a little sparky out there. I mean, Brian McGillivray was taking a, a huge risk there. He just took Martin Hickman down. Collisions all over the park. Emil Rudder is about to come on for Great Britain, the last of their three changes. Irons was a smashing pass. Very unlucky not to find Crossan with that. Shaped to shoot and then guided it through into the path of Crossan. 
It's really well spotted. Unfortunately for Crossan, it's uh, his last chance of a goal today. Can Rudder get involved with his very first touch? Terrific ball back by Highdale first time. Porch was looking for Barker. Here's that ball by Irons. You can see he's just clipping it deliberately towards the path of Matt Crossan. Brian McGillivray in the Irish goal spotted that well actually. Good turn under pressure from Evans. Messick doesn't mind taking it in a tight spot either. And they were unlucky there if Evans could have taken that down. Good running from the Irish captain. Can't have been an easy job really, leading a team that's been well beaten in each of its three games, but he's kept uh, his head up, kept a positive example, I think, for the rest of his players. back to Highdale, Porcher, Rudder drifting in from the far side, Barker very rarely gives the ball away, now Luke Evans messes in front of him, Got a touch off a, a British defender. Try and win the second half may have been the instruction from uh, the Ireland management team. They've not had a goal yet since half time. Gary Messick. Bit unlucky not to get a free kick there. His wrist was being held. <laughs> There's a little bit of snap out there still. A few players warning one another not to take liberties. Is Rudder. Sheridan neatly on to uh, shoot. Here's Messit. He's enjoying getting time on the ball, Gary Messit. And showing what a sophisticated player he can be. Barker, couldn't quite find Porcher, British corner. I think with the result uh, sealed some time ago, it has slowed now to close to a walking pace. Both teams will have one more match to confirm their finishing positions at this tournament. Is Hickman, Irons. Porcher, yeah, mess. It's good defending. Knows Porcher's going to turn onto that left side. Oh, 
Highdale saw that and went for it. My goodness. He, he didn't enjoy the tackle in the first place, Sean Highdale. And he saw that ball and was going to win it. And he wasn't worried about going through the player either. Now, he may have made contact with the ball. He did. But he went in with such gusto. A lot of referees would have cautioned him there for just being reckless. For having a little disregard for the safety of his opponent. But... Um, referee has kept things calm competitive spirit always burns no matter whether semi-final places are no longer up for grabs you can never expect a match between Great Britain and Ireland to be uh, short of passion Irons. It's just lacked the precision in the second half from Great Britain. It's lacked uh, the speed, the intensity, and I don't think the coach will have uh, too many harsh words about that. Bearing in mind the huge disappointment of uh, the two previous games, the close run defeats to Ukraine and Brazil, can't have been an easy game for which to motivate the players, but they've come out, responded very well. Right from the start, actually. Highdale was just caught a little bit there, but he's off and running again now. Porcher testing the defence for pace. Oh, it's a terrific intervention by Markey. He'd read the situation brilliantly again, Markey, there. He knew full well that Highdale was coming in behind him, and he had to get there. Arguably been one of the busiest men in the competition, Joseph Markey, in the Ireland defence, which has been conceding goals all over the place. Porcher, back to Irons. And Porcher again. And he still can't score today. That was a lovely move. Irons just couldn't get it out from under his feet. And there's that man, Markey, again. Wanted a corner. Now, Porcher again. Will it happen for him this time? Rudder is with him. Hickman is to his left. On by Sheridan, that was terrific. And they've got three on one here if they move it quickly. Tute to Messit, and Messit went for goal himself. And then Barker didn't clear, and Connor Tute has scored for Ireland. A moment to treasure for 19-year-old Connor Tute. Lovely counter-attack. Barker just dallied with it, really. And Chute nipped in for an opportunist goal. Won't earn them any points, but a lot of pride. Uh, it's 5-1. Sean Hydale with the immediate response from Great Britain. And maybe Ireland won't win this second half after all. Barker with a splendid pass. And Hydale scores his first goal of this Paralympic competition. Everton to Liverpool. And Liverpool with the finish.
Great Britain scored twice right at the end of the first half. I wonder if they have a similar finish in mind for this second period. Little flurry of action right at the end of the game, just when we thought perhaps that it was fading away. to add it on time we go then final match in pool a for both of these two teams great britain are going to end with three points in third position an island bottom of the pack so great britain will play off for fifth and sixth and ireland for seventh and eighth and great britain will play argentina and ireland will play usa Porter to Highdale. Lovely little move. Here's Barker. Porter again. Under hit the pass. Oh, super trick by Highdale. <laughs> He'd have enjoyed that. Highdale again. And he wanted the penalty. Wanted it a little bit too clearly. Shame he couldn't find the finish after that lovely trick. Goal there would have stayed in many a highlights reel for many a year. Markey with a through ball. Tutor just snuck into a dangerous position between defenders. Markey thought he'd try his luck. Last few seconds, referee preparing to whistle. Well, it's a good way for Great Britain to end the group. They were very close to Brazil and Ukraine and lost both games, but today they've come through comfortably against Ireland and proved beyond any shadow of a doubt that they are the third best team in this group. Tough for them not to be in the semi-finals, but a resounding win over Ireland by five goals.